Help me with velocity banking to pay off my mortgage. That is a question that came in recently from Lorna. So shout out to Lorna, who's married, 40 years old. We've got a credit score of anywhere between 720, 800. We save about 500 to $1,000 a month and we invest about 500 to $1,000 a month and we give about $100 a month. We're dealing with a nurse. So shout out to all the nurses out there trying to improve their personal finances, make better decisions with your money so that we can achieve financial freedom, financial independence, and become abundant givers, right? Fulfilling our purpose in life. So our income is about 6,000 a month. We spend about 5,000 a month. So she must have already accounted for the saving, investing, and giving within that number, which then leaves us with about a $1,000 cash flow. All right, she put two, but if I'm doing the math correctly here, six minus five is one. So maybe that was an error on her part. Either way, so I'm gonna assume $1,000 in cash flow, $1,000 saving per month, $1,000 investing per month, and then that 100 in giving, working in the nursing industry. So that question, right? There's when you fill out my contact form, I have you guys you know, explain to me in detail, how can I serve you? How can I help you? So she went right into velocity banking to pay off the mortgage. First thing that I do, you know, I'm not gonna force velocity banking into someone's financial situation. So I first want to make sure that velocity banking makes any sense whatsoever to even to even do that. What if she has a 2.5% mortgage and the interest rates right now prime is around 8.5%. So your average personal line of credit is going to run you anywhere between eight and a half to, you know, the 12% range. And then most HELOCs right now are in the seven, eight, nine plus percent range. With an intro rate, we can usually get somewhere around four to six percent, right? But we have to have really good credit. We have to have a home. We, gotta, we have to have equity. So there's a lot of other factors that we need in place before even implementing this concept. So that's going to be some of the first things that I'm going to really identify when I'm working with people on the phone before we even get velocity banking going. I'm looking at the four major numbers, what's coming in, what's going out, what's that net cash flow. I'm thinking first, how can we redirect cash flow? How can we maybe reduce cut costs? Could we start with Snowball? Just making extra payments on the mortgage or are there other debts, right? Does Lorna have other debts that we can maybe get rid of, increase the cash flow to then apply towards a mortgage, right? So there's the pregame work before we even get to velocity banking. Then by the time we get to the velocity banking, does it make sense to actually pay off that mortgage using that strategy. Let's say it didn't make sense. It's, you're not gonna get a much bigger gap or difference between making extra payments. Let's just say that's the case. Then the next strategy I'm gonna look at if she's still hell bent on paying off that 2.5% mortgage or 3% mortgage, whatever it is, then I'm gonna look at, well, what if we used a cash value life insurance policy with our savings dollars and our cash flow dollars redirected that money from the bank into a high cash value life insurance policy funded that built up the cash and then over a period of time we would take out loans little by little to pay off the mortgage or one big loan to pay off the mortgage in full so what if we did something like that that could be something unique where it's like hey what is the most efficient way to pay off your mortgage is it velocity banking is it making extra payments? Is it debt avalanche? Is it snowball? Or could it potentially be a high cash value life insurance policy where we send those extra dollars that we were going to pay towards this institution, this debt, this mortgage, and sent that money to our own banking system first, which is gonna come with a death benefit, it's gonna come with a living benefit. It's gonna give us the ability to earn money tax-free, compounded, guaranteed forever. For as long as we live it's going to provide that protection on the journey of becoming debt free we now have a life insurance policy to protect us in the event something happens to us in the event i get cancer in the event something i get terminally ill whatever the case may be i actually have a client that is going through that right now they they acquired a cash value life insurance policy and then shortly after they were diagnosed with cancer and only have a certain amount of time to live. And so that death benefit actually kicked in while they were living in the form of an accelerated death benefit rider, which they used to accelerate some debts, make some moves, set the legacy up, make sure everything's good before we graduate earth. So these are all different things that I like to have conversations about before we just like throw ourselves right into a strategy, right? So thank you, Lorna, for the question. Thank you for 
submitting all the information, being vulnerable. I look forward to having a conversation. The action step I have for you is to start out with a consulting call first. You know, just book a one hour session with me so that I can get a deeper look at the finances, deeper look at your situation, who you are as a person, how you operate your finances, what is your track record, all these different things, analyze your goals, and then from there, figure out a way that we can work together on a long-term basis. Hope that helps. Have a wonderful day. God bless, and we'll be talking soon.